the history, there's two parts. The history of what happened at some time in some place somewhere. So you got two things there. You got time and location. And then number two is the various I want to finish a moment. Okay, you cannot do it because it's uh, too long. Well, then cut it somewhere. Okay, now now continue. Okay, so I am interested in history. And history, basically, that's H-I-S-T-O-R-Y. History, basically, a record of human beings in the world. That means the whole world. And history is basically two parts. It's what happened at some time and some place. And that's basically important because history changes over time. A simple example of that is now we have automobiles, also called cars, C-A-R-S, a short firm and these are basically vehicles that move us around on petroleum, also called oil. And that became the custom in over a hundred years ago. So we are basically what we call car cultures. And we can move around very, much, very easily because of petroleum. And so you basically, when you start history and study history, you listen and you learn about uh, what happened at some point in some time and then what happened since then in that particular time and period up until now. And so I was always interested in history because in the United States, which is a country that had a lot of immigrants at that time, it started in, uh, in 1607 on the east coast of the United States in a place called Virginia and a town called Jamestown. And that was the first English settlement of the western coast of the United States. And then subsequently, a lot of other people came to the United States from Europe and then eventually from many other parts. So America is the short name for the United States of America. And the United States of America is a very interesting country because it has nowadays, and this is the year 2024, so that's 2024 where I'm making this, this video. And so America now has been a place for about 400 years of people coming from many different countries in the world. So to be at what is called an American citizen now, that means an official member of the country called United States of America. People come from all kinds of countries and they all have difficult histories. So why did they come to America? Well, they started basically as British colonies and then they started opening up and they had a lot of people that coming from other countries over the years. And they still have many, many people come every year from many countries to become American citizens. So the question is then, why do people in other countries want to come and have been coming for oh, about 400 years, 400 years from 1607, they come to America and they also come to the country north of us called Canada. And Canada is primarily British and also French on the east coast around Quebec. But why do people come to North America, particularly to the United States and secondly to Canada? Well, you have a word called, well, you have several words, actually. One, work, <laughs> one word is called hope, that's H-O-P-E, and the second word is opportunity. And so Canada and the United States had many poor people, and the emphasis on poor people, P, 
P-O-O-R, poor people. And that means they didn't have much money and they didn't have much land. And often they had a difficult land in their home countries, everywhere. So they could come to America and then later come also to Canada because they would have a lot of opportunity. So they hoped to have a much better life for their families. So I repeat two words, hope and opportunity. And that's why you have a lot of white people like me in the United States and also a lot of other people. You have colored people and you have Negroes and you have Asians and you have people from many different countries. And then they become American citizens, which means they are legal residents of the United States and they have a lot of opportunities and jobs and they have good family histories. And so the United States is basically the hope and opportunity of the world. And so it was set up and it's still that way. People still come from many, many countries. So as I mentioned, <laughs> my wife, Young Suk Park, is from Korea. And I'm from originally Germany and you have people from all the countries of the world that are living in the United States. So why is the United States important? This is a different question. Is the United States important? Yes, it is. Why? And I just gave you the first reason, hope and opportunity. People could have a new, better, that's very important, better life in America because there was hope and opportunity that you could have a better life than your old life in the old country. And so this is the United States. So still the United States is extremely important. The United States has approximately 330, well, I think the last one is about 335 million people in it, which is a lot of people. Because if you look at the world, the country that has the most people is China. And then the next person, next uh, group of people is in India. And both uh, <laughs> those are in Asia. And the third one is in Russia, which is in Europe. And so the United States is the number four country in the world, according to population. But if you look at India, it's mainly people from India. And you look at China, it's mainly people from China. And if you look at Russia, it's mainly people from Russia. So the United States as a number four population country in the world is quite different because they got people from everywhere, everywhere, from about every country that lives in the United States. And so it's what you call a multi-racial and multicultural society. Multi-racial means people come from many different races. And so this is basically the importance of the United States. It's been and is the home of people from the world. And so they come to the United States and you have what you call an American culture which is the majority culture. And it started out as, an, as a European culture and now in many different parts of the United States, people follow cultures of other countries. And that's what you call minority culture. So why am I in Korea? Well, it's very simple. I talked about World War I and World War II, which made the United States in North America. Now, North America is the continent. If you look at a world map, you have North America and then it's connected to sent through Central America to South America. Now, South America also has people from other countries that settled there. And so the United States basically has a sort of a world culture with people from everywhere. So my, as I mentioned before, my family came from Germany 
And my wife's family is from Korea. And in Korea is a country of about 50. Last I saw, South Korea is 51 million people. You also have North Korea, about roughly 20 million people. So there are Koreans, about 75 million people in the world from Korea. And you have Koreans scattered around in many countries too because Koreans also came to the United States for opportunity. But there's a but here. But my wife's family, Young Sook Park, family did not come to Korea. They stayed, excuse me, did not come to the United States. They stayed in Korea. Instead, I came to Korea. Now, America has a lot of programs with, when I say America, I'm using that short form for the United States, has a lot of contact with many other countries. And as I mentioned, they were in World War I and World War II, and they were quite powerful. And they are the number four population of people in the world. So they have a lot of connection with the world. So the United States had a program years ago called Peace Corps. Now we had a famous president called John Kennedy who became president in 1960. And he set up a program later, some years later. And the program was about sending American young people mainly, but also some older people to other countries to help them for about two years. So I joined the American Peace Corps program to Korea and came to Korea years ago. And so I worked in South Korea, not North Korea. And I was in a town called Chuncheon, which is over in the northeastern part of South Korea. And it's about two hours by bus from the main city of Seoul, which is over on the left, basically on the left side, nearly the left coast, about not too far from the water there, about two hours by bus. So I ended up in, in Chunshan. So in Chunshan, there was a young woman that was teaching at a middle school. And her family came from Tegu. And if you look at the map, you'll find Tegu is several hours south of Seoul, the major city. If I remember correctly, it's a number two city in Korea. And she graduated from the university in Tegu a university in Tegu, and became a middle school teacher in Chuchan. And what happens then is people meet each other. So I met your mother in Chuchan. And so I spent my two years, well, actually I met her after in my second year of Peace Corps. I didn't meet her in the first year. So then when it came time for me to finished my two years service, then I had a choice that I could go back to the United States or I could go to some other country or I could stay in Korea. And I decided to stay in Korea because I wanted to marry your mother. Now I'm speaking to my children now and grandchildren. So I stayed in Korea. And as I put it jokingly, I had a choice of wife or country. And I picked wife because I wanted to marry Young Sook. But in order to marry Young Sook, I had to stay in Korea because Young Sook was not interested in immigrating to America. Now, she does have a master's degree from American University, but she wanted to stay in Korea. And so I stayed in Korea. So I go back to my term of a long-term ex American expatriate. Long-term means time period, and then America means my citizenship. I'm still a foreigner in Korea, and I'm a resident of Korea. And I enjoy myself, and I manage to go and visit about 50 diff over 50 different countries out of Korea. And so I now what I describe as a world traveler. 
Now my age now is very old. In July, which is last month, I turned 80 years old. That's eight zero. And that's kind of old because the normal age of American males dying before or at is about the age of 78 or 79. Now that's American males. And so I've actually lived a long time according to America. So over the years I visited my family in America, in Michigan, and I have a son. His name is Sean, that's S-H-A-W-N. And for some of you listening or watching this, that'd be with your grandfather. And so he also married a Korean woman. So the Harmson family, and I'm using basically the male, is also the Park family. It's the Harmson Park family. And he also married a Korean woman. So we are, we are, I'm talking about we are, the family that Young Sook and I started, we are basically a world family. And we have connections with Korea and with the United States. And I mentioned I like to travel a lot. Your mother actually has been almost as many countries that I've been. And the interesting point is uh, I was basically traveling with her or by myself and we were paying our expenses. And now your mother is what you call a scholar of what you call forward, the forward situation, the humans of the human race, if what will happen in the future. And she's called a future Aldis, and she's a, a professor at several universities in forward studies, which means she talks about the forward part of the of uh, human beings, and she, which is interesting, and she basically is invited to the various conferences in the world from uh, an organization called Future Society, which is headquarters in Washington, D.C., which is the headquarters of the United States, and that is the world center of the future, future society. Now, the interesting point is she gets invited to talk about the future society. So this is another interesting point. I'm very interested in history, which is the study of the past and of the world. I'm what you call a world history buff. That's B-U-F-F. -F. That means a person interested in human past, and she is interested in human future. So in my family, we combine the past and the future, and we live in what is now called the present which means a time now between past and present. And so this is interesting to me, and this is talking basically about humans. So in human society, you have a long history, very long history, and uh, in terms of biology and science, it's called humus, Homo sapiens, that's H-O-M-O, -O, and it's listed in biology, as we Americans and other people that are humans, human beings are called Homo sapiens. And then if you look at Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens have been on the planet Earth. This is a new word now. The planet Earth, that's basically the planet in the universe. The universe is everything that is so large. And then you have what you call planets that were in solar systems, and they were in satellites and that, they're scattered around in the whole world. And that's what you call science. So biology is basically the study of, of living creatures. So human sapien, homo sapiens, human beings, are basically the humans that are living creatures. And so, now we're talking about the idea of science. 
and the idea of biology. Biology is a study of all living things, all things that are alive. And that includes plants and animals. And so we have plants and animals and homo sapiens, which are human beings. Cut. Young Sook. Are you there? Yeah. Cut. Cut there. Okay. Right. Cut. Did you cut? Yeah.